Well, what do we have here? Oh my goodness, is that titanium with Altegra? Triple with a carbon top? Ah, victory from Le Mans. We will check out what this would cost you after this. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hi, I'm Justin the guy. Obviously, I have a garage shop. I'm taking scary how to use bikes one bike at a time. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Welcome back to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hey, I'm Justin the guy. And with this old bike series, this is, what is it gonna cost you? Yeah, well, was it gonna cost you to get yourself a Thai carbon bike? A lot, even in the used market. These are just woo -hoo 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 -hoo. But I was able to find this gym in my area and I jumped on it. Even though it was out of my price range that I currently buy bikes, it is something that is one of those unicorns of a bikes that you just need to go, you know, just get because or check out at least and it is actually in pretty good shape surprisingly how old it is it's you know well it's not like super old by any means but in a sense it is a little bit older um since it is kind of a unicorn of a bike i just had a uh, had to grab it unfortunately it's not my size <laughs> it's, it's uh, probably a good thing because i already have too many bikes um it is a 53 centimeter which some lucky person of that particular size range 53 54 if you ride a 54 this is the guy for you talk about unicorns uh unicorn is also a titanium uh manufacturer here in loveland colorado uh, does custom frames as well as um has stock and he has in stock a couple gravel bikes i'd suggest checking them out you can find them on my website under the um uh well, what tab is that uh not affiliates that's a whole different thing oh resources yeah you know you know suggestions of people to fit bikes and things i do and tools that I use and that kind of thing, resource page. But anyway, um, yeah, so finding titanium out there. There are several titanium bikes, and what I've been finding, the majority of them are, even in the used, you're looking close to a grand. Um, even when it's a little bit older like this with the 10-speed stuff versus the 11-speed. But, you know, titanium is titanium. Um, it's one of those uh, materials that... It was or used to be very expensive to make back in the 80s and the 90s. Um, that process, well, it's not really hard to find material. It was unfortunately under the Iron Curtain. Um, most of the titanium, manner, uh, titanium process ore was in the 90s produced in Russia. So it was hard to find or get a lot of titanium in the market. That's what drove the price up. Well, nowadays, titanium prices have gone down for the raw materials, but still the processes of putting it together and so forth is still kind of expensive. And also, since it's not as popular material like your carbon fiber, the sheer volume is a lot lower. Therefore, the prices are still a little expensive. But if you can get yourself a new titanium just frame around 13 to 1400 bucks, um, and that's either... You know, partially custom or fits your if it fits what you're looking for. That's still a pretty good deal when you consider things that nowadays have gotten really expensive. So when you're looking at that four or five, six thousand dollar bike, honestly, getting a two thousand or eighteen hundred custom built uh, frame is actually not too bad when you add the parts kit and so forth. You're right there, and it's actually something that's specifically just for you. That's if you're going to go that route. If not, the rest of us are going to go the route of the used market. Here I am looking for gyms like this, and I've been always wanting a 57 of this. Hint, hint, anybody out there want to give me a gift? 57 centimeter. Yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> this is, we're going to dive into this thing. Why is this part of, is it going, what's it going to cost you? Well, you know, it's going to cost you. Um, it costs me. It costs me to put parts into it and so forth and kind of figure out what we need to put into it to uh, make it safe to ride and so forth. Um, yeah, we got a stretch chain on there, which, you know, obviously the cassette can be kind of questionable. 
they put it on a, uh, a shorter stem, which the person did have actually have the original stem, which was nice. So we're going to check these wheels out. These were known to possibly crack and they put this um, uh, kind of like a wider tread. This is the Pan Eraser version. That's a 28C. You can get these to work on some road bikes, but you got to be very careful of the clearances and tolerances. They try to convert this to a gravel bike and basically they kind of failed at it. Um, and then they end up buying a gravel bike. So it was one of those things that the bike wasn't the quite, quite right fit for the lady and they tried to convert it. They still had the original tire. So I kind of lucked out there, but if they didn't, you would have been buying some new tires. That was going to be going to cost you about 80 to hundred bucks right there. Um, does this have cool bar tape? I don't know if I'm gonna be able to salvage that. We will try if it's not dinged up. It is kind of cool. Um, but it doesn't have a lot of cush to it. It's like one of those pretty but comfortable, uncomfortable <laughs> bar tape out there. Um, so it's one of those things that mm, I might just put on some other bar tape, uh, depending. And especially if I have to replace these cables and, or the housing specifically, uh, once I put that new uh, stem on there, which is more of a standard. This is really a shorty. Yeah, really too short for most people, including myself. So that's something that we're going to have to look into. Um, so, but, you know, consider bar tape, cables and housing as a given. 40, 60, 60 bucks there. So just with the tires um, and that you're looking at 150, 160 and we are proceeding oh the chain that's another 25 bucks so 175 ish around there and hopefully i did inspect this in the field and i was kind of like eh, you know if i find something later as a damaged issue um what i'm looking at is the eyelets here and what happened was is the material was uh too thinned out where the tension of the drive side spokes were too high when they manufactured them and it caused the rims to crack around those eyelets. And I think this one actually turned out to be pretty good. So anywho, we're gonna, that looks pretty good actually. And I have had a couple that are okay. So um, I don't think it was the whole two year three year run when they had these wheels um, but i think the first wave of them was kind of like was the most victims of that scenario so we're going to clean that cassette up um, since it hasn't it stretched only a little over 0.5 so the cassette is a good chance that it's okay so we might be okay there um, i do like cleaning the skewers too because i like to re grease them and grease the shaft to go through to make sure um, you don't get any like rust or contaminants over that period of time. So, all right, so does this have a power link to it? It should, I think it is a SRAM. There you are. So power link uses the plier tool here. Um, reason being, I'm just, I am gonna replace this chain I do have a 10 speed chain for it. Uh, so we're just gonna uh, save those. And I take the chain and measure it up, make sure it matches the length. And we're gonna go proceed to cut the cables on this. So I am putting on new cables and housing, considering the age of this bike. And even though it hasn't been ridden that much, but I still see a little bit of, you know, rust indications that it's seen a little bit of weather. Yeah, I believe it had come from a state originally where it was a little more humidity. So that's a concern as well. I'm going to pull these bottle cages out of the way. So, so the titanium spine bike. Um, Spine bikes were made for about four years, five years, I think 2002 to 2006. And then they went to a full carbon. Um, I think 
about a third of those, if not over all those years, they made a titanium version of this, but they didn't make a lot of them. Um, and this one has the Reynolds. They also had a True Temper one, which was the next year's version of this. So that was kind of cool. Um, so they did it with a couple different types of materials. And the ride of titanium is if you like the ride of steel, you got the quality of steel, lighter weight, and um, it doesn't corrode. So if you're in an area where there's a lot of humidity, titanium is your friend, as, as well as carbon, that kind of thing. So that's where a lot of the benefits of titanium and what might make titanium a cool thing uh, for the cool kids. Uh, it is unique. Anybody rolls up with one of these bikes at a group ride, it's definitely going to be like, ooh, nice bike. It has a classic, clean look to it. In addition to, if they know anything about bikes, they can at re least recognize the titanium on it and, um, and the carbon as well. And Sirota had their version of carbon titanium blend, so they have some real pretty bikes out there. And what I've seen in the used market, those are really expensive, even used. So, um, yeah, I don't see a lot of titanium, but there are out there. There's a few. Um, yes, Roto's one. There's also Moots. Uh, Black Sheep is current. That does titanium now. So you can still get those guys, even in the new prospect. Uh, this does not have a replaceable, replaceable derailleur hanger, but hey, you know, if something did get damaged on this guy, titanium is repairable as well as carbon. So somebody along the lines can fix it and get you back rolling so you won't be out of a bike. Uh, but what, uh, to my understanding, he's built these pretty good. Um, and this one was one of the ones that were made in the United States. I do believe they shifted overseas on the last run or two of these with the true temper, but don't quote me on that. Um, they may have had some of them still built here, but keep in mind that this was probably made in Warla, Wisconsin, um, or they had somebody build the titanium bottoms because I have a hard time believing that Trek, See, titanium is a whole process, right? So it has its own thing. And if you're not making all titanium bikes, one model out of all the different Gary Fisher, Trex, Kleins, which never had any titaniums, is kind of like, hmm, they probably had it sourced out. So the hand-built titanium portion um, was most likely built by somebody else. I would almost guarantee it. So that would be my theory. I would have to uh, contact somebody at Trek because this is when they were building the Treks, uh, claiming them being out of Wildo. Oh, come on. You're being stubborn. Oop. This one's missing its little push pin, which is fine. It's just uh, being a little stubborn. So what happens is you get grit in there, and they like to be a little, a little challenging. A little love tap will do just fine. Soft in, of course. Don't want to be dinging up all Tigger crank set. Oop. Get that, clean that too. So you're looking at chain rings, right? And you're looking at a stretch chain. And when you're looking at these, they're supposed to roll. These rollers are supposed to fit right along this guy. This is the right chain, right? Yeah, this is the chain. So, what you're looking at here is when a chain stretches, it has a hard time lining up with the teeth, right? And once it doesn't line up with the teeth, uh, it starts wearing the teeth out. And this one doesn't seem too bad. The teeth seem to be okay. Still holding it, holding the chain. That's a little test there. 
Um, and you're also looking at, you know, some people just ride in the middle, and that's all they do. Um, but that's what you're kind of looking at. And there's some tools out there, and there's a whole bunch of beliefs of how things are done. Now, it's kind of a quick, easy way without buying any tools and stuff to double check it. Um, also, you're looking for the tabletops, kind of like flatting edging to this, because if it come becomes like this, which is very pokey, you want it to have more form around it to hold the chain. So that's what you're looking for on the crank set. So the chain is, yeah, it's stretched a little bit, but I don't think the cassette, we'll have to test it while we test ride it, obviously, but the chain ring I think we're okay with in this perspective. All right, we're down to the point to do some uh, cleaning and inspecting. And uh, man, I, I hope there's nothing wrong with this frame um, because that would be a true bummer. There was some uh, dingage chippage of the fork blade here looking like for more from a car rack than actual riding. And uh, inspecting the tubing, making sure nothing's really compromised and just if there's any chips, there's just chips. And, uh, that kind of thing but yeah this is one beautiful bike I can't wait to polish this thing up because it is gonna it is gonna be one beautiful magical bike and uh, this guy was oh, from Berkeley came from the Berkeley area and I'm glad it has the frame sticker on there. That just tells me, you know, it kind of helps identify the size because Le Mans are kind of hard sometimes and tricky to identify. Uh, but for the most case, you know, it's one of those things where if you have that sticker, and this probably has a size stamp on it somewhere, like some of the OCLVs do but I'm not quite seeing it right now but we are pretty much in the clear come on sticker I want you for my board I collect bike shop stickers well, this is the big one <laughs> I really like their stickers. Uh, yeah, man. Boop. Yeah, let's clean that up. Yeah, so it's from this guy here. Summit Bicycles. Yeah, Berkeley. Oh, wait, Summit. I know those guys. Hey. If you're watching me, Summit, yeah, those guys used to be part of um, my software company clients, Retail Toolkit. I now remember they had multiple locations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're probably still around. Uh, they done took more of the mountain bike scene, but hey, you know, things change. <laughs> I don't blame them. Um, you go where the popularity is, but you're still in the cycling and that kind of thing. Looks like it has a couple um, garage kind of things, rub up paint. So if you take a little bit of, I suggest you getting white lightning, but I use carb cleaner and, uh, or brake cleaner. But be very, very sparing when you use it and only use it on the rag. Because if it, um, some decals will just basically peel right off, especially if they're not clear coated. And obviously these are not clear. Well, the, this one's clear coated, I think. Those feel like clear coated, but the ones on the titanium are not because why would you titanium, uh, clear coat titanium? Um, it's a beautiful raw metal as it is. So OCLV 220. So it's not their higher end uh, OCLV, but here you go. Yeah, I want to be careful on the polishing. I don't want to make it really shiny. I want to just, I'll just use the regular polish on it. Uh, nothing too too aggressive and just make sure it's maybe these little chips and so forth that have come across 
you know, triple inspect, but most likely just um, make them down, clean up, so forth. So there we go. All right. So finding yourself a titanium bike, well, that definitely needs to be replaced too. So saddle. So yeah, um, we are definitely looking at 200, 200 to 50 in parts on this guy, just as it is. Bar tape, stem, uh, tires, and uh, chain, grit, or bar tape, pedals. So yeah, you're definitely easily at the 200, 200 range. The sneaky bit might be the cassette, which would actually add you another 50 to 60 bucks on that. So, and cables and housing too. Keeping that all in mind, um, a tune-up on this would be probably 150 to 250, depending on what in your neck of the woods and what they charge to have the cables and kind of pseudo overhaul done. Um, that's going to, yeah, let's say 200, so 250. Uh, so you're, we're looking at 450 to get this up and running and making sure the stem and the, and the seat, the fitting contact points are correct. So that's actually not too bad for the service load of this particular caliber of bike. Uh, what are we looking at uh, the cost of this bike? Well, in your neck of the woods, if you're seeing these roughly around a thousand, you're going to be spending 14 to $1,500 on a, on a bike. Actually, that is not too bad considering it's a titanium carbon and looking at the new titaniums, just the two titaniums and titanium carbons out there, you're, you know, with a custom build, you're definitely going to be into the thousands, like three or four or five thousand. So that being said, yeah, it is a little, a little com older componentry, but this is not the one by, this is the triple. So if those who like to have that climbing gear and so forth, like us in Colorado, it's something that you're really going to want. Um, so, and, and uh, he, if you want something later, go buy a one by and do a kit or electronic shifting. This frame, if it fits you, is definitely worth upgrading. Absolutely. So just saying, just throwing it out there, you know, um, for me, since, you know, parts and time and labor and all that is a little bit less that I charge when I re you know, refurbish bikes it's going to be less than 1500 bucks once you see it but anywho that's what it's going to cost you if you wanted to get yourself a Thai carbon used bike and put some money into it that's probably what you're going to be looking at so anywho well check this out and check out these pictures after this Welcome back to hey.